This episode of the Intrepid Podcast is not just scraping the barrel with what happened in 2022 and tackling the first days of 2023. This episode is also dedicated to two holy men who left us in this world for the next, just weeks apart from each other, Pope Benedict XVI and Cardinal George Pell. With that said, welcome to 2023. I am Ian Rinyon, an independent alternative media practitioner, among other things, and welcome to the first episode of the Intrepid Podcast for 2023. And I would like to take pride in this episode because I have entirely written this uh, the script for this podcast episode on my brand new spanking phone. I'm not gonna uh, tell tell you the. Uh, the model of this phone, but it's basically a new phone with on which I would uh, I have already recorded some of my uh, unedited videos, uh, even that one where I uh, uh, recon uh, or I have made a recon ride to uh, uh, to a coffee shop made by or to the coffee coffee shop of uh, Dudut de Guzman of Team Payaman. Uh, it's just. Uh, an hour away uh, when if I cycle it from Intrepid HQ. So um, that's that. First of all, I still wish you a Merry Christmas. Yes. Shocker, right? I You may say, I thought Christmas would end after New Year's Day or Epiphany or, what, or something. But you know, you see, Christmas should actually be extended throughout January. And, uh, and maybe I'm a bit biased here because... Uh, Intrepid HQ also has uh, a new air conditioning system, uh, and I'm not entirely responsible for the re- for for that. But it's just that it's just too uh, cold now, or it's um, cold enough for me to uh, properly work here at the workstation. Not only for IJR Productions, but also to my everyday work. We'll talk about it later on. Now, uh. It's actually uh, Christmas should actually be extended throughout January because there is actually a popular popular piety among Catholics and perhaps perhaps even high church Anglicans and Lutherans that Christmas is a 40 day, day thing. Four zero, not one four. Four zero, 40 long days, which starts from Christmas Day, that's December 25th, to the feast of the dedication of the Christ child to, uh, at the temple and the purification of the Virgin Mary on February 2nd, more known as Candlemas. Now, you might be, uh, if you're someone who lives in Silang, Cavite, uh, this is basically uh, your feast day. And uh, the reason why I mentioned Silang, uh, the, the town of Silang in Cavite, because I have cycled there uh, a number of times already. Uh, and one of the last rides for 2022 was to Silang. And I... Actually bought a a pineapple in uh, Silang. I have strapped it in my bike carrier and uh, uh, brought it home to Intrepid HQ. So I take pride on that as well, uh, just to let you know. Now, also in the Philippine Church, there are the twin feasts of the Black Nazarene and the Santo Nino, two devotions of the one same Word who became flesh, dwelt upon us and offered his very life to attain salvation to mankind. Truly, the anomaly of commemorating the transfer of the image of the suffering Lord from Intramuros to Quiapo all those years ago in the middle of Christmastide gives a great meaning to Jesus Christ being the reason for the season. But aside from the theological and liturgical significance of Christmas in January, there is also a slightly scientific explanation of such. January is actually the coldest month of the year, not December. And given that uh, Intrepid HQ has its own air, has its brand new air conditioning system, it just means our nights here uh, would be much, much colder. I'm not gonna lie. 
and also a good friend of mine whose family uh, joined him in migrating to the United States recently. Uh, shout outs to him because I have uh, I have a very uh, great uh, meet uh, last meeting uh, of uh, I have met him for the last time in a long while here in the Philippines when they were in Manila uh, on the 30th of, the, of December. Uh, 2022, and uh, he basically gave me his uh, Antifonale Romanum. Basically, it's the uh, it's the breviary, but uh, it has musical notes there in plain chant. So uh, he gave it to me as a Christmas gift. Uh, that guy told me, uh, among other things, that he called January the dead of winter, meaning it is the coldest uh, days of the season. Now, as tropical folks geographically located in the northern hemisphere, we certainly experience cold, dry winds during December and January. And uh, really, uh, it's, it's very cold. It's very cold. And um, coming up to Christmas Day, as in Christmas Day and uh, St. Stephen's on the, on the 26th of December, uh, I have, as I've mentioned in some of my videos on YouTube, I have uh, went home with my family uh, to uh, my mother's hometown of uh, San Nicolas, Batangas. And uh, the climate there is so cold that there were no electric fans uh, uh, operating through the night because it's just so damn cold. That's it. So yeah, uh, as trop tropical folks uh, geographically uh, located in the Northern Hemisphere, we do experience this uh, cold, dry climate during December and January. So yes, it's still Christmas in January. And in fact, we should keep at least our nativity scenes and Christmas trees until Candlemas. We can gradually take down the other decorations for practical reasons, uh, all the holly, all the, uh, all the strings, decorations, wreaths, and all that. They can, uh, they can be taken down, but make the Christmas tree and the Belen the last to stow in that order. That means uh, you can uh, uh, you can take everything down, but not the Christmas tree and the nativity scene. You see, uh, in particular, uh, Christmas trees should actually remind us that the new Adam is the child born in Bethlehem, and he will be humiliate, humiliated and hung on a tree and be buried in a garden 30 years later, undoing everything the old Adam did. In the beginning. So as a suggestion, maybe it's from me, but it's a suggestion nevertheless, especially if you're a Catholic or an Orthodox Christian. We should ornate Christmas trees with stars and angels and top it all off with a crucifix, either an image or an icon of such, to put the point across. Christ makes Christmas Christmas. He is the reason for the season. So yes, Merry Christmas. Now, there are things I certainly wanted to tackle in the program, but it's just too small to even allocate my limited time and energy to do so. Aside from everything that I have to do, not only as, an, uh, as someone who works, someone who is uh, a son of uh, some parents, a brother to, uh, to my siblings and all that, I have a lot of hats to wear. That's, that's that. And also, the year-end rush that is Advent and Christmas just outrightly push these things to the back burner until the Christmas rush is through. And it just so happens that the Christmas rush uh, in the secular world is through after the Epiphany. Fair enough. And this is why I scrape these quote-unquote dregs at the bottom of the barrel this January 2023. In Tagalog, Dregs equates to latak. Thus, these topics are the quote-unquote dregs of 2022 or in Tagalog, mga latak ng 2022. There are at least three major things that I wanted to talk about in these, um, in these dregs or these leftovers, uh, so to speak. Firstly, there are some copyright and fair use issues. Now, uh, it, this is not only limited to uh, social media influencers. It's also it also affects uh, a lot of people, especially 
yours truly, who is a very small YouTuber. Uh, and I am actually limiting this to YouTube, but I'm not sure with the other platforms. Specifically, there is this uh, YouTuber lawyer named Attorney Rani Libayan. And uh, if you are aware of who this Attorney Libayan is, he just happens to be Nico David's legal counsel against his uh, uh, against the case uh, filed by uh, Mark Jason Warnakolahewa, aka Makagago, and John Arenz Jacob. Basically, Nico David won, and uh, Attorney Libayan represented uh, Nico David in court. Now the thing is, now na, uh, the thing is, uh, Attorney Libayan has been. Uh, is now the one who is being uh, filed a case against. And uh, the one who who uh, filed that is the team behind uh, Rafi Tulfo in action. I am not sure what the hell is going on with these guys, but to give you a full disclaimer and uh, uh, let's just say a full disclosure, I happen to know one of Rafi, Tulfo, uh, one of Ra- one of Rafi Tulfo's children, specifically his daughter. Because if I am not mistaken, she is uh, uh, Rafi Tulfa's do- daughter, uh, one of my uh, college classmates back then. So uh, that's that. And uh, I am not sure why this is going on with his, with her family, with this, with this case, and all that. I really just don't want to uh, dig deep because it's. It's already in court if I, as of this recording, and I would let the legal system run its course. So uh, I'll put it at that. Now, this is not limited to uh, local uh, YouTubers or local content creators because uh, the likes of Brett Yang and Eddie Chen of Two Set Violin were also victimized, uh, or should I say uh, affected by this kind of proxy uh, copyright issues. Because uh, if you are a Ling Ling wannabe or someone who is a, f- uh, a fan of Two Set, uh, you're probably aware that uh, their 4 million subscriber concert in Singapore was uh, taken down, for the lack of a better term. And it's just weird that the pieces or the, uh, the music that these two violinists did or performed was actually already in the in the public domain. If I'm not mistaken, they both of them performed uh, Mendelssohn's uh, violin concerto, and I'm not sure which violin concerto. It's a it's a violin concerto by Mendelssohn. That's where that's what I'm uh, that's what I'm aware of, and yeah, it's just uh, unfortunate that these guys are uh, disappointed and. Fred and Eddie are not the ones are not only the are not only the ones who are disappointed here, but probably the Singapore Symphony or- Orchestra as well because they're the ones who accompanied uh, Brett and Eddie. And uh, let's not forget the fan base. So uh, they're also upset about this uh, technicalities that YouTube has uh, done, and it's also uh, applicable to myself on my end because uh, because uh, during Advent I. Recorded my uh, cover of the Advent hymn Babylon is Fallen. Yes, uh, that hymn can be considered for Advent. So for next Advent, you already have one option. Okay, from yours truly. The thing is, I really wanted to cite the link or the reference to the lyrics of uh, that hymn, uh, Babylon is Fallen. But for some reason, YouTube has. Uh, deemed that uh that link a little bit dangerous or whatever uh so i i just uh so i just told or basically told myself yeah fine i can take it out i can edit it that way but uh let, i i'm just uh telling uh everyone for due diligence that uh what i sang was not mine and i just did a cover of that hymn so that's that so yeah, that's uh, that's one topic about copyright and fair use issues, and then you also have fatherhood and daddy issues. Uh, it's a little bit awkward because uh, 
while I'm recording this, my own old man is uh is inside the room and he is uh uh tending to the new air conditioning system here in Intrepid HQ. So that's that's just uh weird, but I I take it as it is. So you see, during the Christmas rush, the, there is this influencer father or influence uh influencer or let's just say a social media guy, or uh maybe this is just an average Joe uh for uh for all I know, uh he's a father and uh for and basically he he's a uh, let's just say uh someone who is into uh uh games. He's uh, an aspiring gamer, and he, he just so happened to be a father as well. So uh, he just posted, maybe um, out of lack of prudence, probably or whatever, uh, that he would just he he can forego everything that he wanted so that he can uh, meet the needs of his child. Now it did have a. Uh, mixed reactions from a lot of people uh on one hand there are uh there are some who say that this father is just doing the bare minimum why do why does he have to uh why does he have to uh uh share it to the world if he can just uh if he can just uh uh enjoy it or uh reflect on it on his own on the other hand though young adults are exposing their uh their own uh animosities uh animosities with their fathers and uh for some and for some cases I cannot blame them uh especially if uh these young adults uh, experienced very bad memories with their uh with their own parents especially their fathers that's why they have these so-called daddy issues. I do not want to invalidate that. Uh, so much so that I do not want to invalidate as well fathers who are doing their bit to uh, do their uh, do their responsibilities to their families. And I myself am uh, trying to discern on how to, let's just say, sort this out myself. If if and when I become a husband and a father so uh that's just that so the balance take here from yours truly is that so, uh we should uh parent ourselves and at the same time uh become better persons and parents so uh in short or in uh to simply put let's be better persons uh let's try let's start parenting ourselves if we had the very uh if we had a very bad childhood or we lacked something in our childhood and honestly i i did lack some uh factors during uh during my ch- when i was a little boy but that's no excuse for me to uh to share my daddy issues to all of you because uh that's in the past and uh it's up to me to uh go above and beyond what my own father did to me so uh maybe just to uh end this uh end this topic what i can say and i hope this is also what you would consider to say the curse ends with me from now on i will become a good parent if you're a guy if you're if you're a male if you're a man if i the curse ends with me and i promise myself to become a good husband and a good father to my wife and children if ever i became one yeah sorry uh i'm not really crying it's just that uh it's just too touching or just too um disappointing that i had to uh say all that at least I'm trying not to cry. <laughs> that's uh, that's uh, that's it. And in connection with that is uh, this uh, 
this topic about breaking the cycle. Now, I have already mentioned this in uh, my previous and in the previous episode uh, during the uh, during episode two, uh, where I uh, shortly uh, or I somehow uh, tackled uh, H2O and his mom and uh, breaking the cycle. But I just wanted to uh, reiterate this because there is a connection between breaking the cycle and uh, the concept of discarte or uh, the the nearest uh, the nearest uh, translation to discarte in English is hustling hustling your way to uh, to success now hustling is not bad per se if you really hustle to uh, to do something that uh, would uh, benefit you it's actually uh, it's actually a good thing however hustling one's way to ac- to success is a two-edged sword because on the one hand it is beneficial if the discarte that you are doing would not only help you but also help others in the process so it is beneficial if the person and his friends trust and help each other and it's it's a male- it's malevolent if there is a lack thereof for example team payaman so kong tv is someone who uh who really is uh your average joe guy or your average guy who just so happen to just want to be successful and where and where it, where is he now uh he has a he has an estate. He has a uh, he has a future wife and a kid, and uh, he's not alone in in succeeding. He helped his uh, he have his siblings, his friends, his family, and everyone who is uh, connected. Basically, the reason why they call themselves Team Payaman because they believe in this uh, concept that it is always lonely at the top, and what's the use of being at the top if you're alone, right? So uh, maybe that's the reason why Kong and uh, the rest of his friends strive to get there as a group, not as individuals. Sure, they have their individual, their their individual hustles, their individual discartes, but uh, they have this common goal, and uh, at the at least at the very least for the Velasquez family. Uh, they already have their own way of doing things. So, uh, congratulations to all of them. Shout out sa kanila. And maybe after this recording, I would cycle to Dudut's uh, coffee shop. That's for sure. <laughs> anyway, I did actually wrote a piece on this about breaking the cycle. And uh, right now, it's not... Uh, the notebook where I wrote it is not immediately in my workstation. So. I am basically checking my own pa- Facebook post for that. So let me just check that out. But it's not too um it's not too far off. It's uh fairly recent. So I'll just uh check this out. Pardon the silence, pardon the um let's just say the uh Pardon me as I check this on the fly as I as I am reco- as I'm recording, so yeah, that's that. And I do mean it. I'll be, uh, I will be cycling, uh, to Dudot's coffee shop after this. So um, yeah, uh, I ha- I actually missed, uh, Dudot's uh the, the coffee shop's soft all opening last week because it was in. It was three in the afternoon, and uh, yeah, um, it's three in the afternoon, and uh, I have to I have to go to mass at five. So that's just uh, that's just unfortunate. So yeah, it's um, it really is just unfortunate. It's just far down here because I have a lot of stuff. You know what? Uh. Yeah. Just give me a moment, please. Anyway. Uh 
also a uh, part of the uh, latak ng 2022 is the death of Jose Maria Sison, uh, the leader of the Communist Party of the Philippines. Now, as as much as I am questioning his his own ideology and the ideology of his group, all I can say is that it that his death is a litmus test to the, the to, to determine where people's loyalties are, and that's the end of it. Okay, okay, I got it now. So this, uh, let me go ahead and quote myself, uh, when I when I wrote this last December eight, twenty twenty two, the feast or the solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. Now to properly break the cycle, parents need to let their children make a living or earn for it in their own terms. They will fail, they will make mistakes but they will certainly appreciate your support and the right amount of advice and wisdom. To properly break the cycle, young adults need to realize as well they, that they will go and grow old, that being a self-made individual, quote-unquote self-made man, will bite them in the backside later in life should they have children and especially if they decide not to. Having no obligation towards their parents is no excuse to live a selfish and self-centered life because breaking the cycle means balancing self-love with genuine concern. And that's where I would like to end that topic regarding breaking the cycle and this, and its connection with discarte. So that's that. And thus, we properly end tackling about 2022. So... I wish you all a happy new year, but not without feeling frustrated with Donalyn Bartolome to start 2023. To make the long story short, Bartolome made a suite of social media pieces about her work ethic, and to quote and translate the first and most infamous of her scribbles in English for my non-Filipino listeners, and please prepare your uh, ears, folks, because this is cringeworthy. I quote her, as I try translate this into English. Why is it that people are sad because New Year's is over and we go back to work? Aren't we supposed to be fortunate that we have a chance to improve your life and your families? I like to work every January 1st since I believe in this superstition that working on that day would assure me I will have work for the rest of the year. We should be grateful because we work. If work makes you unhappy, I hope you find a job that will. This is just a reminder that Having a job is a blessing. Change your mindset, girl. It's 2023. End of quote. So that is Donalyn Bartolome and uh, her blabber to start the year on a wrong note, <laughs> if, uh, if you ask me. First of all, I'm not superstitious. So uh, right off the bat, uh, the fact that she believes in this superstition is a little bit questionable. But... While I personally do not care about how she thinks about work, and I mean, who the bloody hell is she anyway? She's not Taylor Swift for all I know. It is important to understand why everyday Filipinos are insulted or why the everyday Filipino is insulted with this remark of hers. Work is hard. It's a no-brainer. And to quote another social media personality named Eri Niemann, some prioritize security over passion. He perfectly nails the condition many Filipinos are into, especially when there are still people who are being frowned upon if they did a significant career shift, emphasizing, perhaps out of context, the reminder of growing where they were planted, even if the time for growth has already passed and it's time to bear fruit and multiply elsewhere. Niman's quote, applies to yours truly as well. IJR Productions is but a mere passion project initiated in 2019 by someone who dreamed of getting involved in the media industry but realized he wouldn't make the cut. As a passion project, all of the means for producing content comes from my own pocket and sometimes from what's left of my bi-monthly paycheck. If you would like to support the work that I do, it would be appreciated if you can redirect your monetary donations to my accounts on Patreon, Buy Me a Coffee, Ko-Fi, and PayPal. The links to these are provided in the show notes of this episode if applicable. 
while I'm the in I'm in the heat of promotion, another way of supporting me is to like this recording and share it around. If you're on YouTube, it would also help if you would subscribe to the channel named Intrepid Ian Rinyon and ring the notification bell bes beside it by selecting all. I also have a Facebook page called The Intrepid Show with Ian Rinyon, and there's also Twitter and Instagram, though I seldom use them. If you're a cyclist like me, I also have a Strava account for you to follow and check the rides I have been into. The links to all these sites are also in the show notes for you to check out. Now, going back to the topic. Bartolomé's subsequent posts only proved her defective moral compass and her sense of altruism, or as some people call it, main character syndrome. In a nutshell, she thinks the world revolves around her and her perspectives, to be charitable, can be considered by the general public due to her status as a public figure. In short, it is the case of someone bringing her own chair in a conversation or in Tagalog, nagbubuhat ng sariling bangko. She also displays narcissistic behavior whenever she engages with the general public through social media by sharing her own story if not comparing herself with others. Given her background, her media career, and how she hustled her way to success by taking advantage of the distorted standards of the entertainment industry, it seems she had the chance to do her own thing despite her well-to-do status. And yes, Nico David debunked her poor, uh, quote-unquote, poor origins because she is actually uh, someone, uh, someone from a well-to-do family who just chose her way to success. Uh, I would also link uh, in the show notes uh, Nico David's uh, debunked video on that. Shoutouts to him. Some say it is privilege, and I say though, it is the pretty kind because of her allure towards men. Now, uh, just to go off, sp off script, I have also uh, tackled this on a separate brood banter uh, that is uh, pri pretty privilege. I have also tackled uh, Donalyn Bartolome there, but I have, uh, I have not uh, explici uh, explicitly mentioned her name and this is the first time that I did so in this episode. So uh, I'll also provide that uh, the link to that YouTube video wherein, uh, or that brood banter where I uh, talked about pretty privilege. So that's that. And I would like to conclude my take on Bartolome by this thought. It is easy for her to say what she said since she had a relatively easy way to succeed in her work compared to most of the workforce who has to employ the coping mechanism we now know as quiet quitting. For most of her fan base, work sucks because they have no choice. Therefore, Bartolomé's perspectives lacked prudence, discernment, and empathy for those who work for a living, most of whom live from paycheck to paycheck. While I cannot assume her personal religion, I highly recommend that she reflect on the life of the biblical character Joseph the Carpenter, son of David, husband of Mary, and terror of demons. For Catholics, we know this guy as Saint Joseph. And may he help this woman, woman gain wisdom to work in silence and shut the bloody hell up. And now allow me to conclude this podcast episode with obituaries for two of the pillars of the modern Catholic Church. Originally, the podcast episode is only supposed to remember Pope Benedict XVI, who died on the last day of 2022. However, on the 11th of January 2023, Australian Cardinal George Pell died due to complications after undergoing hip replacement surgery. Cardinal Pell was the Vatican's finance chief when he returned to Australia in 2019 to defend himself due to the child sex abuse scandals there. And I would just like to let you know that the sex abuse scandals were, were absolutely abhorrent and both Pope Benedict and Cardinal Pell absolutely abhor, that, uh, abhor them. And uh, Pope Benedict explicitly said sorry to the Australian church when he uh, visited Australia for World Youth Day in 2008, 2008 if I remember it correctly. Now, much has been said about Pope Benedict's legacy in the church for centuries to come. So much so that the sensus fidelium in his funeral was Santo Subito, Dottore della Chiesa, Sainthood Soon, 
and doctor of the church. The same goes with Cardinal Pell in a slightly inferior way, not only for his orthodoxy and intellectual mind, but also, and frankly more importantly, was his perseverance in keeping his faith and maintaining his innocence in imprisonment. It is such a sad time for liturgy and theology enthusiasts within the Catholic Church who not only value the good of the Church and the sense of the sacred for that matter, but also preserved what can be said as the most enigmatic aspects of the faith. The Mass and the old form of how it is celebrated prior to 1969. While it is disappointing that we seemingly lost a German Peter and an Aussie Paul, and while the arrangements for Pope Benedict's funeral was questionable given his status as the former Pope, and that of Cardinal Pell's would include backlash and tomato tomato hurling when his remains returned to Sydney, these unfortunate circumstances are not excuses, and I would like to repeat that, these are not excuses for us to blast Rage Against the Machine's iconic song, Killing in the Name, and give the current Pope, Pope Francis, the finger, and scream to the top of our lungs, F you, I won't do what you tell me, while imitating Rodrigo Duterte's voice. As much as I see it as a cool and candid thing, and maybe even hilarious, to do on a personal note, God forbid, that I do exactly that in public. And being someone who adheres to the belief of the divine in collaboration with human endeavors, as well as believing in the resurrection of the dead, on the last day, I invite you to pray for the repose of the souls of Pope Benedict and Cardinal George Pell. O God, when thine ineffable providence didst will that thy servant Benedict shouldst be numbered among the high priests, grant we beseech thee that he who on earth held the place of thine only begotten Son may be joined forevermore to the fellowship of thy holy pontiffs. Through the same Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who wast pleased to raise thy servant George to the dignity of the episcopate, vouchsafe him, we beseech thee, to number him with thy bishops and priests forevermore. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen. On that note, I end today's podcast. I would like to thank you all for listening. Recording of this episode would be available on YouTube with further plans to expand to other platforms. It's also on Spotify. I would just like to, uh, I would just like to uh, add that. So please make sure to check out for that. All of the materials I have referenced for this episode would be listed in this recording's description or in the show notes as provided. If you think there are things I might not have included in this recording or if you might if you want to have your say about the matter, please feel free to leave them in the comments below if applicable. And with all that said, this is Intrepid Ian Rignon reminding you to at all times be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, be kind to yourself and to each other, and thank you for tuning in. From here in Intrepid HQ, See you next time for another talk here on the Intrepid Podcast. May the souls of Pope Benedict XVI and Cardinal George Pell and all the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace. Ian out.